Welcome to the videos for your stool project. So the stool project is going to be composed of a number of different videos as you know, but we're going to start right at the beginning and what that means is we need to know our measurements, which you can find in the written instructions, or you can follow along and be writing them down along with this video. Okay? So we have a number of different components in our stool project. Um, so we obviously are going to have the pieces that make up the steps. I only have two out of the three on here right now. But that's going to be broken down, right? Then you have the frame. And even the frame is kind of broken up into two different parts. We're going to build the, the frame of the step first, and then the frame of this step, and we'll install the legs onto those after, okay? So we're going to start by cutting all the pieces for this. Your pieces for the top are already cut to length because they don't fit in your miter box. Mr. Coop did that for you. But we are going to cut all these pieces out of the material that you have. Okay, a few more reminders before we get going on cutting. Um, you want to start, of course, by finding the fresh cut end. So maybe you can see here there's a, oh, that's not a very good cut right there. <coughs> This one's pretty smooth. If neither of yours are good, then you just need to set up your saw and cut a very small amount off so that you have a clean cut, okay? So once you have a clean cut, we are gonna make our measurement. Our first two measurements, and again, there are four pieces we're gonna cut from this. Two at 11 and a quarter and two at five and a quarter. Which ones are we gonna cut first? Ah, glad you asked. Well, we always cut the longest one first or shortest ones first? The longest ones first. Why? Because if we cut the short ones first and we cut them too small, they can't be used for anything else on the project. Whereas, if we accidentally cut the 11 and a quarter ones long, short, then we can use that for the 5 and a quarter. In fact, we could get both 5 and a quarters out of it probably. So that's what's good about that. Now. You guys should be using a sharp pencil, whereas Mr. Coop's gonna use a pen just so you can see it happening here in front of your eyes. Okay, so we're gonna go 11 and a quarter. And a quarter inch is the one, two, three, fourth mark uh, over. And we're gonna do our crow's foot, 11 and a quarter. I'm gonna take my trusty speed square. And remember, I like you to put your pencil or pen, well, pencil right on that point. Move your speed square to it and go ahead and mark your line. Now, your shims are different than they used to be. Remember, you're putting your material tight towards the back. Your shims now, I gave you two of these and the reason is we're gonna have some angled cuts here soon, but we don't yet. Don't forget to put your little spacer block underneath over there. If it's still moving a little bit, you may want to put something else also under there. I'm going to actually just... Ooh, that's a nice fit. Okay. That's going to make it so that this is nice and square. Okay, and we're making sure our line is on this side. Oh, I forgot to mention. I don't know if you saw this, but I drilled a new hole here so that I don't have to keep removing this screw. A new hole here to hold my saw down. I don't tighten it very much because <clears throat> I don't want to um, bend the blade. Okay, these new wedges work really great. The way we do this is we set one in here, another in here, and we tighten it until it doesn't move. 11 and a quarter. Go ahead and cut and get two of those and then two at five and a quarter. Watch and learn. you can make sure that they're exactly the same and it's very important that these ones are exactly the same because otherwise your step will be a little bit wonky 
Okay, so make sure these are exactly the same. If they're not, I'm gonna teach you a trick in a second. How to use your sandpaper set onto a table to just sand them down a hair if that's all it needs. So hopefully it doesn't need much. Okay, now we're moving on to the five and a quarter. Equally, they have to be just as precise. So um, when I say precise, say it's five and three sixteenths, as long as they're both the same, that'll work out just fine for these particular cuts. In a moment, when we get to our other pieces right here, these have to be very precise or a little big because otherwise these pieces won't fit inside that I have already pre-cut for you. So here we go, five and a quarter. I'm going to mark it. I'm going to use my speed square, get perpendicular lines. Here we go. Okay, we have our five and a quarter and 11 and a quarter pieces from this block. That's all we need from this stick, so you'll have some extra, you can set that aside. Okay, now we're gonna move on to uh, one of these. We're gonna start with the skinnier of the two, okay, or the thinner. So one of them is one and seven eighths, and one is one and three quarter. We want to use the smaller width of the two, starting on that first, okay? So, again, we look for the smoother of the two cut sides. If it's not smooth enough for your liking, then we can go ahead and make a fresh cut. There's plenty of room on this stick. I'm starting to get some more sawdust in here than I like. Um, you can find a trash can or if you're outside and you're sweeping up later, you dump it off to the side for now. It's nice to have a clean uh, miter box. So I need to get this little support under here. Okay. And now my miter box is set back up. For this particular piece, we're going to cut four of the exact same size. And the size we need are 15 and a half. Okay, so 15 and a half inches, four of them, and they need to be exact. Or, like I said a little earlier, a little bit big because you don't want to cut it small because right now I've, I've cut the pieces in here to just under 15 and a half, and they need to fit here. So if, uh, if we cut it too short, it's not the end of the world. We'll just need to make sure we change it in relation to this. So we need the dimension from inside to inside to be 15 and a half or a little bigger. So err on the side of bigger this time. 15 and a half. This time, in order to make it just a little big, I'm gonna line this up so I know the saw will not actually cut on the line or this side of the line, but just on this side of the line. Okay, when I set my saw on there, it is just to the right of that line, and so I'm gonna go with that. It's probably more like 15 and 9 16 maybe 15 and, uh, what is that? 17, 30 seconds, there we go. All right, here we go. Oh, I'm gonna stop right now, and here's why. I just felt these little clamps come loose. If that ever happens to you, make sure you get them tight again and maybe knock that with a hammer. See how you can see the whole line? Let's just double check. Okay, Mr. Coop. Yeah, see it's more like five and nine sixteenths now, which is fine, okay? So whatever you do for one, make sure you try and do it as close to or exact to the other one. So you're going to need four very identical pieces. So on this one, you want to, if you make the mark by holding this one on there, you will want to take away the pencil line this time because the pencil line is the outside of the cup. You 
equal or equal. Four flush, good. Equal, 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 equal. There's one that's a little bit uh, bigger than the other, so I'm gonna grab sandpaper, I'll show you how to do that. When I stand these up, one of them is specifically longer than the other one, or particularly long. So I'm gonna take that one, I'm take my sandpaper, and I'm gonna put it on a flat surface You gotta be careful though that you don't lose square, that it stays flat. It's easy to make that rounded instead of um, flat. So I'm gonna just touch it a little bit, knock out a lot of it, and then go to the other side. Excellent, now we're there. If you have a lot to take off, it might be worth trying to get back on the saw. If the saw will not cut, when it has no material on one of the sides. It will probably push it off or slide off. But as long as it has material to both sides of it, so if it's an eighth inch bigger, quarter inch bigger, you can make those cuts again. <clears throat> if you do the sanding technique and you're taking off a full sixteenth or more, you may want to bring your speed square and just draw a line that you need to go to. So if if this piece does not line up with that one, you can make a mark and a square over so that you know you're staying square and that your piece is not getting beveled. Okay, so I have my four uh, equal six of uh, 15 and a half. I have my two 11 and a quarters and five and a quarters. We are on to the next stage, which is cutting the legs out of the 1 and 7 eighths material, okay, that's our wider stick, so we'll jump into that. Now, this is a bit tricky, there's going to be two different cuts you're going to make, you're going to make two at 17 and a quarter, ooh, that's my rough side, and two at 19 and a quarter, that one's better. Let's start with the 17 and a quarter. What? Oh, I was testing you. 19 and a quarter, right? Because the 17 and a quarter can come out of the 19 if we screw them up. So let's do 19 and a quarter first. The 19 and a quarter are these angled pieces that need to be longer. 17 and a quarter are the straight ones. As long as you don't make any miscuts, you'll have some extra wood. These three pieces are extras. Okay? So, right here, I have all the pieces I need to make the frame. So these will be for the frame, and these will be for the legs. Before we move on and get rid of this, now you get to see the tricky part. You want to learn how to cut those angles on the bottom here? Notice, these cuts here and here are angled. So, Coop figured out a tricky way for you to use these clamps to make those angle cuts. You gotta pay special attention right now. Here we go. Before we get to cutting this and using those special wedges that I just showed you, we actually wanna just make sure we have a line that dictates where we wanna cut this. So, here's how we use this speed square to get a specific degree. Along here you'll see it reads 0, to 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on and so forth. We want to hold this tight here, where it says pivot, 
and rotate this until we get to 21 degrees. Okay, kind of hard to do it in the air, but I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get there. 21 degrees. Now you want to make sure that the pivot point is right at the very apex of this cut. Okay, and we're gonna mark that. So we're not 21 degrees, right there, and I'm tight there, so I can make that mark, and that will be 21 degree cut. Okay, very important that this angle is the same down here, so we're going this direction from high to low. So, I bring this back over. I'm do it on this side. Get it right to the end. Move it until it says 21. Going this direction, going this direction. They need to be the same. That's gonna make you understand, or that's gonna help it, help you make the right cut when you come here because you'll actually need to flip over on one side. So see how, when you look at this, the angle's the same, there and there. These need to be parallel to one another. All right, now we'll go ahead and wedge this, and I'll take another picture, so that, get it right where we want it. You can put some pressure on that. And remember, we're just trying to cut on the forward push. There we go, we got ourselves a nice angle. Let's do that again. Okay, nice parallel cuts, so that'll allow for the leg to go like this. Wonderful. Okay, let's do that again. We're gonna make our marks onto our other one from this one. Okay, mine are not exactly the same. All right, so there we go. Legs, the bottom step, top step, and you'll of course have the pieces Mr. Cooper already cut for those steps. Step two of your step stool project. Step two is assembling all the frames for the stairs. Okay, so you have two treads, one, two, on the step stool and we need to assemble those. So, yeah, last time we met, you guys did cuts, and we have the material for this. Sorry for the leg of my tripod being in the way, but you have the bottom frame and the top frame, right? So, uh, the easy way to do this is to start to mark out for where we're gonna drill our screws in on each of the boards. Now, you can go ahead and we're gonna keep one of the five and a quarter inch blocks for the moment and set aside the 11 and a quarter and the other five and a quarter. And we're gonna just pile these guys like this. And if uh, you wanna use straight edge on speed square, just take one of these blocks 
it could be the 11 and a quarter I guess but you're just gonna take that block make it flush with the outside here and then you're gonna make a gentle mark because this will have to get sanded off okay on that side and on this side Then to continue it on to the fourth piece, you can use your feet square so that you have a mark for where this guy or the other size one will fit. Right? So, as you can see, that line tells you where that board is going to be and you're going to have your holes inside of those line, that line okay so the key to this is trying to get this to be flush and this to be strong i have a knot right there i want to try and avoid that so seeing that my other pieces don't have knots where i'm drilling i'm going to make my pattern symbolic off of this one and we want to do the same everywhere. So if you want your screws to be in at least three of three eighths, probably half inch would be better from each side. And I think it's better if they're diagonal to one another. So I'm going to do one hole here and one hole here. If I really want that to be in the same spot on each one, what I really want to do is get a piece of paper, draw it out, and punch a hole through the paper so that we can make it equal. Let me show you how that's done. So here I have made a little piece of paper. It's the exact same size as that rectangle. See, I have marked a half inch by half inch down in each corner, diagonal from each other, giving us a template for a nice result. I've made myself a little template. I'm going to now punch a hole through. Okay, so I have holes through, and that's my template. You're going to need to flip this and flop this depending on which side it's at. So like I said, I want to avoid this knot. Set this on there. Make a little mark and a little mark. Okay, then when I come over to this other side, I can flip it upside down so it's the exact opposite. Line it up with my line, make a mark, and make a mark. Okay, and you may need to come back and just make it a little stronger. So we want to be at least a half inch in each direction. Go ahead and use your template on the rest of them. Now that you have your little dots marked out on tops and bottoms, it's time to start drilling. So bring over your um, miter box or grab one of those scrap pieces of wood and we're going to start drilling. Sometimes you just got to listen to some music while you're doing your work, if you know what I mean. Let's try using a clamp on the edge of a table if you have that available to you. Then you can just use two hands at all times.
So now that you've got these nice holes on your pieces, we need to figure out how to get these attached to the thicker pieces that are gonna be our sides of the frame. So uh, what I wanna do is teach you how to utilize the clamp. So we wanna get those two things right there, flush here, flush here, and then we clamp it. So, of course, once you get it clamped as originally, you can get a little, you can fudge it around a little bit, but. Okay, got it in the right spot. Flush here, and the clamp is actually gonna naturally flush it out top to bottom. So it's most important that you get that right. Okay, so now that that's clamped as it needs to be, um, we need to get our 764 drill bit. Now I'm going to put that 764 in there. And we are going to make sure that's flush. And we're going to pre drill for our screw to be able to go in and not tear out the end grain. And remember, you want to try and stay as centered as possible. Now, I've begun the holes for both of these. That's kind of nice. Unlike our last project, you can do two at once. Um, and you can then switch over and drive two screws. Okay, I got my two screws. I've already pre-drilled a little bit. That screw's gonna go right into that pre-drill hole. And we are gonna tighten that down. Okay? Don't over twist this. Once it gets tight, stop twisting because the end grain can't handle a lot of twisting. It will start to tear out instead of add strength. Okay, so just gentle, especially since we are going to put this back together. All right, so there you go. Um, this sits flush here because we had the clamp on it. This is tight because we had pre-drilled, sorry. This is tight because we pre-drilled through here and now the, the screws are grabbing. So what we're gonna do is do that to now all the sides and put it the rest of the way together. Once we get it together, then we're gonna release it like we did last time, maybe one side at a time, glue, glue, and then screw it back down. So please do not over tighten these, otherwise it will strip out the end grain. End grain is not as strong as edge grain or face grain, and so it really needs to be kind of gentle on that. But uh, once the glue's on there and the screws are in, it should be plenty strong. All right, so you saw me put in the first two. Let's put all of them together. You're gonna watch me build these in fast motion. Here comes our time lapse. and these turned out nice and flush all the way around and I've got three out of my four sides done here so very good flush flush but oh no when I went to go do my last one this might happen to you as well and it will move over to the point where it'll be flush but how are we going to get it to stay there while we pre-drill? Well, my recommendation on this particular thing, one of two things you can do. Uh, what we can do is use our clamp in a different way. We can move that until it's flush, right? Hold it there. And you may need to do it like this. And then use your clamp. Instead of actually clamping a few pieces together, you're kind of clamping the hold that position 
Now, since you've used your clamp to do that, now that feels really nice and flush. Now I might need to move it a little bit more. Okay. Oh yeah, now we're perfect. So, the problem is, it's not going to hold it equal this way. So you got to make sure you adjust for that. Okay, now I'm going to put my pre-drill back in. So remember, you're looking for it to be flush in this direction, flush in this direction. Okay, now I've got it in there. I'm making sure it stays flush. So I'm kind of holding out my fingers right there. And now it's holding it right where it needs to be in place. Okay, there you go. Now you have your two step frames. That is awesome. All right, students, so now that you have your pieces screwed together, that's great. Now we need to make sure that they stay long term. So we are going to remove the screws one side at a time, put glue on them, and then put the screws back in so these are permanent. Here we go. One thing I want you to pay attention to is how I put these screws in. So they are in, they're tight, and then I also did what I call soldiering the screws, at least I got that term from the guy I learned how to do carpentry from, where the X is the same each time. So uh, if I do my X like an X, great. If it's like a cross, they all are the same on each side. So. You can kind of see the heads there. They're going to be the same. I like to do the cross style where the they look right. So that is just one detail that makes it look a lot more clean. So I've done that first one. I'm going to go ahead and glue the next one now. After you glue it, make sure you take a rag or something to get the glue out of these corners. Right? Clean it up as best you can. Uh, the nice thing is, all the places that will be visible, like here and here, will be sandable. So, not the end of the world if there's some glue on there. But we'll sand that later. Good job. I'm here to tell you today how to make a template so that you can drill all the holes for your angled legs and your straight legs in a way that's faster than I originally had done in my video. So these, as you know, are the same width. So that means we can make a template that is the same width and has actually the same hole pattern um, as you would have for either one. So here we go. I'm gonna pull it down here, show you what we're up to. So, if you grab a piece of paper and a pencil, pause the video if you have to. Our first stage is drawing a line right here. Doo -doo -doo. So, when it's flush on your paper there, Doo -doo. Now, that is our width. Now, unlike you, Coop has already put together his stool, but the next thing we're gonna do is get the height, right? So, the easier way for you to do this, since you don't have yours in, and I'll just do it actually the same way. Set it flush, and make a mark. Okay, so you want something like that. Okay, now you have a piece of paper that is 
this width, so this width, and the height of the step that you're attaching it to. So from here, I'm gonna have you do the first. You're going to measure half inch. Don't have to have this on there. Okay, half inch. Make a mark. Get it up. Make sure you're directly on there. Half inch, make a mark. Now you can use your ruler as a straight edge and connect those dots. Okay, so now you have a line at a half inch. Next, you're going to come a half inch down. Make a cross here. And then from this side, you can go a half inch as well from the whole number. Okay, here is our template for the legs. Okay? In the video you watch on the legs, you'll see you'll measure eight and a quarter and make a mark. Then you have your template, poke the hole through, poke hole through. All right, now we have a template. Set it where our piece is gonna go. One, two, all right. There's the dot for that, and then the other one's right at the top. You wanna make sure that your legs are opposite one another. So hole, hole, that's fine. Then we'll go on here. You want to make sure that's flush to the outside, flush to the top. And then I come here, double check that I'm at eight and a quarter. Set my jig up. All right, now I've got my holes for all of my pieces within five minutes. Now that you've got these glued together, it's time for us to sand them to make them look a little nicer before we install them on the legs. So here we go, sand time. Starting with 80 grit, here we go. Now we need to figure out how we're gonna get these attached to those legs. So, let's do that together. I'm gonna to rotate this camera down. All right. So, here's our work table. We're gonna start by working on the straight legs that are going on the back. So the top step is pretty simple. You just flush it out with the top of this, and here, but the bottom step is gonna sit in the middle, so we need to mark for that. So I'm deciding which ones I want to be where. I see that there's a knot there. Let's talk about, I want these to be towards the bottom, I decided. So I'm gonna go eight and a quarter inches, eight and one quarter inches, make a, a mark there, and I can line these up together, flush here, and make this mark. Okay, eight and a quarter is gonna be the top of this step. So, on one side, that's where we're gonna install this thing right here. Now we have our two eight and a quarter inch marks. I forgot to do this for you. Make sure you make an X. That is where our material is gonna be. You could also set this on here, make a light pencil mark so that you know that's where it's sitting. Then this one.
I'm here to tell you today how to make a template so that you can drill all the holes for your angled legs and your straight legs in a way that's faster than I originally had done in my video. So these, as you know, are the same width. So that means we can make a template that is the same width and has actually the same hole pattern um, as you would have for either one. So here we go. I'm gonna pull it down here, show you what we're up to. So if you grab a piece of paper and a pencil, pause the video if you have to. Our first stage is drawing a line right here. Doo -doo -doo. So when it's flush on your paper there, Now, that is our width. Now, unlike you, Coop has already put together his stool, but the next thing we're gonna do is get the height, right? So, the easier way for you to do this, since you don't have yours in, and I'll just do it actually the same way. Set it flush and make a mark. Okay, so you want something like that. Okay, now you have a piece of paper that is this width, sorry, this width, and the height of the step that you're attaching it to. So from here, I'm gonna have you do, so first, you're going to measure half inch don't have to have this on there. Okay, half inch. Make a mark. Let's do it up. Make sure you're directly on there. Half inch, make a mark. Now you can use your ruler as a straight edge and connect those dots. Okay, so now you have a line at a half inch. Next, you're going to come a half inch down. Make a crosshair. And then from this side, you can go a half inch as well from the whole number. Okay, here is our template for the legs. All right, students, now that you have your nice little template, <clears throat> we're going to learn how to put it where it needs to belong right here. So you're going to need your tape measure. <clears throat> First thing you're going to do is measure up eight and one quarter. Make your crow's foot. And then I want you to put an X towards the bottom of that leg. So we've been measured up from the bottom of the leg to there. Eight and a quarter, made a crow's foot, and then an X below it. Do the same thing with the other leg. Eight and a quarter, crow's foot and an X. Okay, now take your speed square. Now you can get those lined up. Those are excellent. Then you're going to take one of your steps. I chose the smaller one just because it's easier to work with and line it up right on that line there so that you can then strike a line on the opposite side creating a nice spot for your legs to go. Well, that'll let you know where your legs are going. <clears throat> the top should be lined up as well. All you need to do there is flush this out with the top and make a mark across there. <clears throat> okay, now we know where the steps are gonna go. Right, these will stand up, and they'll be facing each other, we'll have the steps between, and that will work out great. And now what we need to do is use our template that we created, and you're going to line it up on the inside edge, and make your little mark. Okay, there's the two little... Okay, then we're gonna flip that template over or you can do it like this if you wanna see the line 
up to you. So just like that, I have the holes where I need to drill them for my back legs. Let's go ahead and drill them. Now we know where we can drill our holes. So we're gonna drill these, and then we're gonna screw them onto our boards, and then we'll do the screw and glue. Oh yeah, it's me again, and we are back. We are ready to do our, put our legs. First, we're gonna start with the straight leg. We'll come back to the angled ones. Onto our steps that we have now screwed and glued together. All right, so, Without saying anything more, we're gonna zoom this thing down. Let's go ahead and drill these holes so that we're ready to clamp and screw them onto our steps. So I've got my holes drilled through right where I had marked them. Now I need to put these on one leg at a time. So reminder, the holes are going to be closer to, they're going to go into this material because that's our stronger grip. That's going to hold it better. And that's where the glue is going to hold better. The end grain is not as strong. So we're going to have it like this. So we're going to start with this one uh, on the small one. And, you know, we're gonna clamp it in place, leaving it visible at the one hole there. Okay, and I just gently clamped it so that I can still, oh, I gently clamped it and then loosened it. Gently, then I can move it around a little bit, get it flush both here and back here. Okay, and now I'm gonna squeeze that tight because it's in a good spot. Now, even though that is squeezed tight, it does not mean that this thing is uh, <clears throat> perpendicular. We need to check that. Mr. Coop just realized this is a problem. Why is this a problem? Uh-oh, I can't check. So we will need to switch it over and clamp and do this side first so that we can actually check. So luckily that didn't take too much work. Now we can put this thing here and check for perpendicular. Whoa, Coop got it nailed on the first try. Look at that, no gaps along there. And I am tight to the back here. You can see that now, okay? So that is exactly what we're going for. We want those legs to be nice and straight. So now that I have that in place, what do we do? We get our smaller bit pilot for our screw. And I pre-drill that. Okay, pre-drilling for that one. Remember, you don't have to go too far with a pre-drill. Just enough to get that screw started in the right direction. It may help to set this up so that it, you can just work with it like that. Okay? First side's always the hardest. Let's get transfer over here. And go ahead and drive the first screw. I kind of feel like this might have twisted right then. We're going to check it. We're still okay. All right. You may need to hold a little pressure. Okay. That screws in there and it feels nice and tight. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, that one is in a good spot. We can release that clamp. But this is still good. 
Then we can go ahead and switch and drive our second screw to lock that one in. Voila. <clears throat> okay, next. Bring this guy into place. Clamp, remember on this side first. On this one, it just needs to be flush on the back. There's nothing to flush out for it here, but we do need to check square. This one is not perfect on first count, but very close. There we go. Little squeeze there. All right, now that we know it's good, switching over. Okay, now we have one side done, all right? So we're just gonna repeat the process on the other side. I'm gonna use one of my angled pieces to just make the elevation the same so it doesn't lean over. So we've got our holes drilled, we're ready to go. Oh, look it. I'm gonna turn this a bit. When I put it on there, it's this is a little bit off, and so it's gonna have to pull us a little bit that direction, but we'll get it all worked out. Start with the top one again. Remember, you gotta clamp this side first so that you can check for square. Flush, flush. Here now we have to deal with this one. We're going to deal with this getting it clamped over, right? So, actually, not that difficult because they're mostly square. There's just a little spring in it. So flushing it out, getting it even at the eight and a quarter. Mark, clamping in place. And let's get some screws in. Okay, students, welcome. I have something you want to teach. Now that we've gotten that peanut out of the way, you have built this stool until this point. Fantastic, congratulations. Now we need to put on those angled legs. How in the world are we gonna do that, Mr. Coop? Great question, I'm glad you asked. So the way we're gonna do that is we are gonna actually make sure that the front of this front leg is gonna support our weight when we go to step on it. That's the most important thing. So hopefully our measurements worked out and that also will allow for our steps to be parallel and even to the ground. So let's take a peek down. Here's our current piece. Now, two really important things. This point needs to be at least equal with this point or further out. Critical point number two. This dimension needs to be the same here, okay? So you're gonna try and align this piece. Now, notice I had my hand over here and I was holding this until it was flush. Okay, so I also wanna make that point flush there. Now, it might be that this angle at the top is not perfect. And frankly, we're just going to have to be okay with that because what's more important is that the length are the same and that the leg comes out far enough. Okay? So, I'm 
double check that again. So we're going to go 6 and 9 sixteenths to that point, and we'll be just fine. So holding it there, double checking. So like I said, this should be equal or close to. And I'm putting this right at the corner. I don't know if you see that. Right. Right at the corner point. Okay. Six and nine sixteenths. There we go. Okay. And then just to check, but because you all have the same length as me, look at that. We have some overlap so that when we go to step on this part, if it's not, if it was here and we grab that, it could lean over. So very important to get it right where we want it. When you know that this is 6 and 9 sixteenths from there to there, this is at the corner, and you know that this has is further out than the step, you're in a good spot. So what I want you to do then, is not let it move. You can't really clamp it though because we want to draw some lines. And we're going to just draw some lines designating where our board sits. Okay, so I have my line here and lines here. And if you want to, so that you can get it back in the right place, you can also put lines right there and right here. Just so you know, okay, that's where it's going to go. And we're going to have some good amount of glue there, right? Okay, so now we have to decide where we're going to put those screws. Now that you have your legs marked out, we can use that handy dandy template we already made for the back legs, again for the front legs. So this time, we are going to line it up. I'll start with the trickier one. Right here, and you're going to kind of split the difference, okay, because this is square and that's a parallelogram, you're gonna split the difference where the paper overlaps a little bit this way and it shows a little bit that way. So, as an example, it's gonna look a lot like this, where it overlaps the line a little bit over here and it shows a little bit of the wood over here. That's how we wanna do it. And you can try and make it the same for both sides. So, Go ahead and use that, make a mark, there we go, again overlapping, making sure I'm on my seam, okay, this one you'll, again same thing, line up, Make your mark. There we go, that's where we're drilling. Okay, those are the spots that you're gonna drill. So now we have our holes marked out for where they should be for both legs. Obviously it makes, you have to make sure that you have, it should turn out that they're opposite one another, right? If you get two legs that look the exact same, then it's not gonna work because um, one is meant for one side and one is meant for the other. So make sure you lay them out on the opposite side, not on the same side, okay? So there we go. Now let's go ahead and drill those holes. As with the other blocks, you're going to want to make sure that you sand these, get the lines off of them, ease the edges, make it so it looks nice to you.
These are ready to go. Next stage, pre-drilling and installing screws. Here we go. It is time to put these front legs on so that all we have left is to put the steps on, right? So let's go ahead and do as we do and check out our work surface. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put <clears throat> the leg that is not getting worked on underneath just so that it keeps it nice and stable and level. Now we've already got our marks. And I'll get a little closer. We've already got our marks here and here for installing our leg. All right. So here is what I want to suggest to you. Instead of drilling them all in and getting it all tight and cozy on one side, we're going to do one, maybe two, haven't decided yet, probably two on one side and then flip it over and do two on the other and then we're just going to check to see how well it all works out before we go putting all the screws in because it might be that once we get it going we realize it needs a little adjusting for the two front legs to line up and it'd be better not to have them all in the same spot. The back legs are a little easier because they're straight. These being a little angled cause it to be a little trickier. So here we go. Um, we have a clamp that I need to get still. So, here we go. We're going to start by finding front point, getting it onto our spot, and I'm going to start with the clamp right here. Very solid spot. Let's drive this one. Now that I've got two in one side, we are going to stand it up and see how it looks when we, how it feels rather, when we go to put it on the other side at the marks that we have. Before I put screws in it, just checking. Okay, it's got a slight wobble to it. Okay, nothing extraordinary, but a slight wobble. It's telling me that if I want to make it better, I want to bring it down a little bit. Okay, that's pretty close. It'll just take a slight sanding. So. Okay, I want you to see this is a lot, a little bit higher, but it does not wobble. And I can double check that this measurement and this measurement are similar. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it there for the moment. It's higher there, but that we can sand off. Six and nine sixteenths. Should be good. So we'll go ahead and drive this. Now, this doesn't really wobble all that much. It's actually really quite good. Um, where there's a slight wobble, we'll tell you how to fix that a little later. This will take a little bit more sanding than I would have hoped, but that's okay. It's better that it it sits right and it doesn't wobble much. So um, these are in the right spots. They feel good. We can double check our measurements. See if you're the same here. Should be about eight and a quarter. Good. And 
These steps should line up pretty well. Nine inches from end there. Nine inches from end there. Okay. Very good. So <clears throat> now we can go ahead and drill and put the other screws in, and then we'll do our glue. Here we go. Alrighty, now that all the screws are in, that's great. However, we want to make sure that's super locked and loaded, so we're gonna remove them, put screws in them, and or put glue behind it and screw it back in. Uh, one tip might be to do what we did on like the shelf project. Let's make a mark so that we get those coming back in the right spot. This will get covered by the top. So there we go. That's where it wants to be. That's where it wants to be. And then we can kind of do a similar thing right here. Step will cover that mark. And step will cover it that mark there as well okay all right so I'm gonna start on this side and you can watch make sure you sand off the pencil marks or erase them before you glue it back on So this may have been tough to see in fast motion, but what I'm doing now is making sure I clean up all the glue that's squeezing out, and that will make it a lot easier in the long run. Okay, so this thing's not totally stable yet, but we'll teach you how to get those legs to be equal after we get the legs on, or after we get the steps on, is what I have to say. Alright, I'm going to make sure I get my screwdriver put back together, drill bits put away, and we will have some sanding to do here in order to make the steps work, and look, we'll look for any other places that we might have some sanding to do before we put the steps on. Okay, students, Woo! we are close. Look at that. We've got our frame built. And um, what I want to do next is some of you guys, if you have any of these things where there's a little piece that's proud, we got to sand that down. And maybe I got a little bit more to do here. So I'm going to start by showing you the sanding on that. And um, we're going to work hard to get that pretty flat. And then 
luckily this one's already done nice and clean doesn't have anything interrupting but we need to stay in the top one and then after we stay in that I'll tell you again I'll pop up on the screen but then we're going to show you how to clamp these pieces down cool here we go All right, students, so there we go. I've got it nice and sanded now. And I checked it by putting the top on there. And it sits nice and flat along all my side looks. Okay. Oh yeah, now that I have it there, just a little gap against there, but that looks good. Okay. So, let's check this out. How are we going to get that thing to stick down on there? And, how are we going to make sure that it's equal side to side? Two very important questions. So, when you put your piece on, it kind of depends on... I'm going to turn it so you can hopefully see it a little better. Okay, so we want to be flush on the back. Okay flush on the back and have the overhang in the front. Then when you look at how to do it side to side, you're going to do what we always do. You're going to measure and make sure it's equal. Spacing should be about a half inch on either side. So this needs to move over. Mine is looking a little bit more like 7 16 and I think that has to do with so I was measuring, it's about 7 16 to the leg, and again over here, about 7 16 to the leg. Okay. So, when that's equal and flush with the back, you can take your pencil and just make a mark, a gentle mark on the back. Turn it around again so you can kind of see it. Um, it's even here and here, about 7 16 Just make a mark, there's one there too, and that'll let us know where to put it when we clamp it. Okay? So, how are we going to clamp this down though? It's going to be a little tricky, right? Well, um, hopefully you still kept your scrap wood, right? So you should have an extra piece that looks something like this. Um, this one I cut an angle on too, but anyway, it should be long enough to slide under here. I've lined up my lines, mostly. Got to shift that over a little bit. Okay. Um, that's where it's going to go. Now, the idea is we take this clamp, or this extra board, and we move it there. Now we're going to take our clamp. And... Test it without glue. Okay, this is flush there. I'm lined up on my lines. And we're going to look and see, yeah, it looks like there's some good connection points all the way around. It's very important that it's tight on, you know, the surfaces where it's going to be glued to. So now that we know that that works, we are going to unclamp that, take this off, we're going to use our glue bottle, and we're going to apply glue right along the perimeter here, and I like to keep it closer to the inside so that if glue does squeeze out, it goes 
to the inside of the stool where you can't see it very well and um, not squeezing out the front, although it won't be that noticeable either. You'll be able to sand the back and I'm just spreading it out a bit so that it's more evenly spread. Quick visual on my glue application. Now we have to get that piece lined up again. And you want to try and get this pretty good right on the first drop so that it doesn't smear the glue. There we go. And flush it out here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> because there is glue, it is going to be a little bit more prone to sliding around when you put that clamp on it. But that's okay. We're going to take our clamp, get it up there. And we're using this extra board so that the clamping pressure is a little closer to center instead of just on the one side. Looks like we're in a good spot still. I'm going to go ahead and put all that pressure on there. Especially you want to check that your front is tight after you've applied that clamp. So you can see no gaps there. That glue is going to be holding this thing on there really nice. We have confidently glued down that top part of the stool. In fact, if I wanted to, I could lift it up from that part because the glue is so strong. Really good. Um, if you're nervous about it, you can feel free to add some screws in there. No problem. But uh, this can happen just with glue. I think it looks pretty nice. So that top step not too hard right we can figure that out pretty easy the glue the clamp but now to get the bottom step on a little more complex okay um because we only have the one clamp you can do one of two things the very simple easy way would be to just glue it and put a bunch of weight on it if you have something really heavy that would work okay um, if you don't have that, then um, <clears throat> you can try the method I'm about to do, and that is to measure and cut some wedges that will hold it down. Okay, so I'm going to measure off of here 6 and 7 sixteenths is the distance from there to there. Okay, so I'm going to cut a block that's about six and a half so that it's a little bigger and we can angle it and press it down so this gets good tension here. I'm going to cut that for this one. I'm going to check here on the back and see if it's the same. Yeah. And so I'll have one pressing, pressing down weight here on this board. I'm going to use a clamp for here and then uh, another one in the back. So two pressure fit things and then a clamp in the front and I think that should suffice for us today. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get my miter box. Some of the scrap pieces of wood that you have available to you, stuff that got left behind off your other pieces. I'm going to cut a six and a half. And six and a half. So here's how those wedges work, and as you can tell, I have my hands off of it. They're actually holding that down quite well. So I have one that goes across the seam because we're going to have our smaller board in the back and our bigger board in the front. 
So the seam should be pretty close to underneath this, which is where we're pressing down from. And then in the back, we have that wedge just coming down on the back side. Then we're going to utilize our clamp to press down the front. And I put my clamp over here because I noticed that this was a little bit more proud. This board was slightly twisted. So since I have pressure here holding this back edge down, this causes that edge to go down and this is already, because of the twist that's in it, already pressed down. So you can double check, see how the whole front edge is now tight. That is good. Let me show you my unclamp. See how the gap is more here than in this side? You want to look for that as well and clamp closer to the side that has more of a gap. Okay, so this is how it's going to turn out. Um, we're going to go you know, as flush as we can on the back and try and keep it equal as it goes through once we get this set for the final time. All right, let's take these out. All right, we'll let that sit up overnight. Okay, students, so if you made it to this stage, you should already be super proud of yourselves. Um, you got all the legs on, you've glued these onto the steps, and it's a step stool. You made it. Now, if you need to, there could be some adjustments you can make to make it stand better. So, you know, getting all of these perfectly laid out, put together, and the fact that the wood can twist or bend or do all kinds of things may mean that these legs might wobble a little bit it may not be perfectly sturdy mine turned out pretty good if yours wobbles more than mine don't worry we have a way of solving it and uh, i'm going to teach you that right now so here's how you solve uneven legs okay well um uh, since mine's not super uneven i'm gonna have to kind of fake it uh, let's say it's possible that maybe your back left leg was longer than the rest, okay? And it wobbles like this, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to try and find where does this actually sit level? When is this in a good spot? And you can know that by measuring. So if you measure up here, measure up at this corner, and at this corner, and at this corner, and then you see, oh, that's interesting. This measurement is a little longer than the rest of them, okay? What that means is we need to take some material off of this leg to make it match up with the other three, or you might have two legs that you have to take material off of to match up with the other two, something like that, okay? So let's just say this is the way it was. We saw this is the high point. And what we'll do is you have to find a balance between there and there, there and there. So you might have to get some paper or magazine and try and get these two legs that it's wobbling on. So this front one you'll see moves down which brings this back one up. If you make those even, then you'll take your pencil and you'll see, okay, you'll make a little mark, okay, on this back leg that needs to get shaved down, all right? So I'm gonna turn it 
playing around with the computer. You're going to take your pencil and you want to take off about as much as the gap is there. Okay. And we're going to make a mark. When we've made that mark, uh, we then are going to take sandpaper, come and put the sandpaper underneath. And then we're just going to... Sand it, okay? And you might need to get it out there a little bit. And I'm just gonna do this to all my legs anyway, just to. Try to make them a little bit more stable. Because especially the angled legs are not gonna sit perfectly right. For that one leg that's long, you're going to want to sand it until you get down to your mark. Um, so again, if if it's wobbling like this, from this leg to this leg, those ones, one of those is too short or two of them. We'll measure. Find out which one's further off the ground, here or here, and then you sand down the one that <clears throat> then you sand down the one that is longer. Okay? And it's a little bit of a trick, but in time you'll figure it out. The um, each one's a little different. If you need some help, reach out to Mr. Coop, show him a video or, or let him see which way it's wobbling, and I'll tell you which one you need to sand. Um, so, good luck with that. Can we see if it holds Mr. Coop's weight? Yeah! Very sturdy, very strong. It doesn't lean over when I step on it.